Jessica Lemazurier is at the headquarters of the UN in New York. Here's what she told us. Negotiations on this Security Council resolution are ongoing because diplomats want to avoid a US veto. This is not a ceasefire resolution. The United States would not let that pass because it, like Israel, believes that a ceasefire would only benefit Hamas. This resolution calls for the suspension of hostilities, a pause in the conflict. It also calls for a UN monitoring mechanism to supervise aid coming into Gaza. There are two main sticking points for the United States. Firstly, it doesn't want any language that could sound like a ceasefire. And secondly, the US apparently also took issue with this call for a UN monitoring mechanism to keep tabs on aid because Israel does not want to hand over any control of this to the United Nations. Now, diplomatic sources say that the US ambassador to the UN, Linda Thomas-Greenfield, was in DC last night and asked Biden to let this resolution pass. He reportedly said no. None of this is confirmed. This is just what diplomats are telling us. The US apparently called to further water down the text and kill the reference to this UN monitoring mechanism. Now, the United States has insisted it doesn't want to veto this resolution over the past few days. Uh, but what's really frustrating to other countries is that while this vote keeps getting pushed back, Gazans are dying. Now, uh, Biden uh, has uh, made it quite clear that he stands firmly by Israel. If the United States vetoes this resolution, it's going to look very bad here at the UN. The US has been accused of having double standards in its approach to Israel, given the way that it's previously used the United Nations to condemn Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine and criticize Moscow for breaking international law there. Uh, how can the US call for international human rights to be upheld in one place and not in another? Many diplomats are asking here.